Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many episodes of these I have left. Um, I'm going to have to do a double check on everything, but um, this very well might be the second to last episode uh, if I don't have find some other item that I haven't finished. Um, this Today we're going to be talking about the Hellfire Torch, uh, which is a very specific item that can only be gotten through an event. I'm not entirely sure that this actually classifies as a unique item because most unique items, you know, will drop normally or natively within, you know, the world as a, as a whole. Whereas this particular torch does not have those specific requirements. And like, for instance, I would normally take you to Silo's Pen at the end of the video and I would tell you, you know, hey, where, where could you get this particular item? But Silo's Pen isn't going to be useful here because the item doesn't drop from any monster except for basically, what, three technically one but three and um we're going to go over the item we're going to talk about its usefulness and then we're also going to uh go over how you can obtain one so uh first off right off the bat uh, let's talk about the differences between the old version and the new version uh, because the first effect on here that you'll see is a five percent chance to cast level 10 firestorm on striking now back in patch 1.11 um, that used to be 25 percent chance uh, to cast level 10 Firestorm. Now, this Firestorm is not the Druid's Firestorm. This Firestorm is actually Diablo's Firestorm that he uses on you when you fight him. Um, it's a very special form of Firestorm that is separate from the Druid's. Um, and unfortunately, the Druid cannot use any of his, like, uh, synergy bonuses or anything on this ability. Um, just to give you an idea of what that Firestorm looks like, I can always go out and, uh, and beat a couple things real quick just to show you. Uh, with the 25% version, it goes off a hell of a lot more often. And there you go. That's one proc of the Firestorm, two procs. And as you can see, it goes pretty far. It loves to just kind of just travel off into the distance. Um, as far as damage goes, I'm not exactly sure how much damage it does. Um, I don't think we have any, like, official sources on Diablo's Firestorm ability. I could always do a quick look real quick on uh, like Amazon Basin or something like that and uh, see if they have stuff like that listed. Amazon Basin tends to have like weird stuff listed for abilities. But of course the Firestorm ability takes us straight to the Druid's Firestorm, which doesn't help us out very much. Uh, let's try the Hellfire Torch. See if they have the Firestorm listed on Amazon Basin that way. And they do not. So, not exactly sure if we can figure out exactly how much damage Diablo's Firestorm actually does. But if you actually watch it, it actually does a pretty decent amount of damage. It can actually kill monsters in normal and nightmare difficulty. I've seen it do it. And, uh, and, it, and it, it's basically an addition to, you know, whatever damage that you're dishing out. Um, it can be a little annoying at times because it does go off a lot um, in the original version. In the new version, it only has a 5% chance to cast, and even then it still goes off a pretty decent amount. Um, it is, of course, fire damage, though, and most monsters are immune to fire, so uh, it will have limited usefulness in those scenarios. Uh, we also have plus to three of a particular skill. So this is random, and uh, it does not have any specific... Um, like, you know, one that it's going to choose. Um, it can be either Druid, Barbarian, Assassin, Necromancer, Sorceress, Paladin, and Amazon. And I feel like we need to take a minute here to talk about, like, the value of the torches. So if I were to arrange these torches by their overall value, um, assuming that they were all the same stats, uh, the Sorceress and the Paladin would be at the top. Uh, Sorcerers and Paladin torches tend to be worth more than just about any other torches in the game. Um, the Assassin torches and the Druid torches tend to be worth a hell of a lot less. Um, your Necromancer and Barbarian or and uh, Amazon torches tend to be kind of like in the middle somewhere. Um, and, uh, and the Barbarian one is probably about like right there. So if we're talking about like the value of the torches, that's pretty much your value scheme. Uh, Sorceress and Barbarian is going to be at the top of the list. Uh, Amazon and Necromancer are kind of tied for second place. 
Uh, Barbarian seems to be in third place, and Assassin and Druids are just kind of generally at the bottom. Now, if there is some kind of shift in meta, the the value of these torches may change. But the reason why the torches tend to have these kind of like ridiculously different values is well because most of the people play paladins and sorceresses. Those are two of the main characters that people choose. And so paladin and sor torches tend to be higher value just simply because they are in higher demand. Uh, whereas something like an assassin torch or a druid torch tend to be lower value because less people tend to play those classes. And that's not necessarily to say that they're bad classes. It's just more people tend to play these classes over the others. Although that could actually change in the future if Hammerdin actually does get nerfed. <laughs> um, now, this particular torch also has some other very nice variables. Uh, the first one is the plus 20 to all attributes. Now, 20 to all attributes is kind of insane because, of course, this is going to give you not only uh, 20 strength, which will help you put on equipment, and give you 20% off weapon ED, as well as 20 dexterity, which is going to help your block chance. It's going to help your attack rating. It's going to give you more defense, and it is also going to give you uh, off weapon ED if you are using a bow. Um, then on top of that, we also get the bonus to Vitality, which is going to obviously increase our HP, and the bonus to Energy, which is going to increase our mana, all in one nice little neat package. Then we get plus 20 to all resistances, which is actually amazing, and um, is going to help shore up our resistances and hell difficulty when we're, you know, obviously having trouble. And then on top of that, we also get plus 8 to Light Radius, uh, which I think pretty much caps out your Light Radius entirely. And... Um, Level 30 Hydra charges. Uh, only 10 of them, but they are level 30, and they probably actually can kill some stuff. Uh, without synergies, though, they're not going to be too amazing, but if you actually were to use this on, like, a, a sorceress that had Fire Mastery and maybe some of the synergies run, that level 30 Hydra actually could do a pretty significant punch of damage. Now, um, the sad thing is, is that these attributes roll. So the attributes, the 20 to all attributes, can roll between 10 to 20, and the all resistance skins can roll between 10 to 20. So obviously, in any given situation, if you were to find a 2020, that would be considered a perfect torch, and those have a very high value. Um, even if it is something like a druid or an assassin torch, a perfect version of those torches will fetch a very nice price. Now granted, if you had a perfect druid torch and a perfect paladin torch, the perfect Paladin Torch would be much higher value than the perfect Druid Torch, just in general. But don't think that a perfect Druid Torch is worthless or a perfect Assassin Torch is worthless, because they're not. They have very high value in their perfect forms. Now, um, as you are hunting for a torch, um, you are going to have to actually farm the pieces of equipment to obtain it. Now, this is where things get a little bit difficult, and uh, I'm going to explain how you can obtain your own torch um, by showing you. Um, so the first thing that you have to do is obtain keys. There are three keys, the key of terror, the key of hate, and the key of destruction. Um, and putting three of these keys inside of your cube will open up a portal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up one right now, and uh, you're going to see that we have the Forgotten Sands. There are three portals and three monsters that you have to kill, one within each portal. Um, if you open up the portals outside of the game like one at a time it is random and you might possibly not get a um uh, uh all of the portals in succession so for instance if i were to leave right now and uh after i killed the monster inside this portal and then go to another game and then use these three cre keys to create a third portal um there would be an issue with this um, I might get Forgotten Sands a second time, and this is a problem, and I'll explain, uh, I'll explain why. So, um, basically what you're going to do is you're going to create three portals in the same game. This ensures that you will get all three portals, and you want to make sure that you make them in the same game. Um, you may want to take precautions. Uh, for instance, maybe have a friend come with you so that just in case you crash or something like that, you don't lose access to these portals. Uh, because if you log off for a certain period of time, your game can disappear. Um, you also have to obtain these keys, and obtaining the keys is one of the more difficult parts of this particular journey. Um, so the key of destruction comes from Neelithak. 
Uh, Neil Thack is always obviously in the halls of pain and he is extremely easy to find. I actually have an entire guide on how to find Neil Thack. Um, if you would like to look at that guide, I actually go over uh, basically how to find exactly where Neil Thack is judging by the shape of the waypoint. Um, and also how to know which of the four directions Neolithak is going to be in on um, any given like time you go into his lower area. Um, the other key, the key of hate, uh, drops specifically from the uh, summoner in uh, Arcane Sanctuary. Uh, now, the Summoner in Arcane Sanctuary, I think, is one of arguably the worst ones to farm because you don't know which way he is. And despite my best efforts and trying to, like, discern the puzzle using uh, a myriad of different ways, I can't seem to figure out if there is any specific way to tell where the Summoner is spawned. So you basically just have to go to all four sides and try and kill the Summoner. Um, the third key drops from the Countess. Um, that is the Key of Terror. The Key of Terror um, is one that a lot of people obtain definitely in, um, in a lot of games because farming the Countess in Hell Difficulty is a very common thing to try and get runes. Uh, the Countess is obviously located in the tower, and uh, usually what you want to do is you want to just run a circle around the waypoint because the tower is usually by the waypoint. Um, if you run a circle around the waypoint, you will usually find it. And, uh, and if it's not by the waypoint in one of the very rare insta instances, then uh, you'll have to search the entire Black Marsh for it. But in my experience, it's usually somewhere near the waypoint, um, either up or down or left or right. Uh, and uh, it just takes a little bit of circling around the waypoint to find it. Um, obviously, the Countess is at the bottom of the tower. And um, I'm going to show you really quickly a way that you can know exactly kind of like where to go with the countess the countess's tower does have a pattern and um it's not too difficult to understand it's basically a um counterclockwise movement from the doorway um, so if you're inside the tower and you spawn in the the doorway you're going to move in basically a counterclockwise motion away from the doorway um, so in this case, I would take a left here, and as you can see, right off the bat, it paid off because the, the entrance and the way down are essentially right next to each other. Um, but it's not always that way, but usually if you follow the counterclockwise movement, um, you will usually find the way down relatively quickly. Now, I don't actually normally recommend skipping the monsters in the tower. Um, and the reason for that is because the monsters in the tower have some pretty high rune drop chances. There's a lot of ghosts in there. And, uh, and if you're farming runes, like if you're farming the Countess for runes, kill the monsters. It's actually worth it. Um, especially the ghosts. I've gotten several Vex runes off of the ghosts in my time. Now, um, as for the keys themselves, what is their drop rate? It's crappy. Um, they actually have pretty bad drop rates, and um, the drop rate does go up depending on the player count. Um, my, the Countess, the Summoner, and Neolithak can drop anywhere between one to three keys, depending on, or sorry, let's say zero to three keys. They can drop anywhere from zero to three keys, depending on how lucky you get. Uh, players eight will increase that by lowering the number of no-drop rolls, but it doesn't necessarily take away the, um, the chance that you'll get nothing. Um, in my experience, as far as, like, rarity goes... The destruction key tends to be one of the more rare keys, uh, simply because most people don't like farming Neolithak due to his corpse explosion. Um, the terror key, which is the Countess's key, tends to be the most common, uh, just simply because a lot of people farm the Countess for runes. And then the hate key tends to be somewhere in between, because a lot of people don't farm the summoner, but um, they farm him enough, and he's not like too difficult. So it's kind of like a, an in-between the two. Um, I usually end up with way more terror keys than I do destruction keys, uh, unless I specifically put a call out to the kinship and like, hey, we really need uh, some you know, destruction keys. And then everybody goes and farms Neolithak and we end up with 10,000 destruction keys. Um, also, it looks like we were able to get the damage numbers, thanks to one of my uh, viewers, for Firestorm. So Firestorm is um, 17 to 23 damage per second. 
and uh, apparently it does up to 46 to 57 damage per second uh, per cell. So it's physical and fire, apparently both, both physical and fire damage, which is pretty common for a lot of the druid skills to be physical and fire. Um, so once you've obtained your three keys, and that's the point at which you go to Hell Difficulty, and it needs to be Act 5. So both Hell Difficulty and Act 5, and this is where you make your three portals. Um, inside the three portals are going to be three monsters, um, and you need to kill all three of these monsters. Um, when you kill them, you will obtain their organs. So from Forgotten Sands is Uber Durial. Uh, from... Matron's Den is Lilith, which is a basically uber andorial. Very, very nasty poison damage. Um, and uh, the Furnace of Pain is where you will find uber iswal. Um, if I remember correctly, um, uber andorial, or rather Lilith, drops Diablo's Horn. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, uber iswal drops the Eye. And I want to say that... Um, my boy Uber Durial drops the brain, but I could have that a little backwards. Let me look up Uber Durial real quick and that'll give me my answer. I got some uh, anime songs stuck in my head today. Uh, but long story short, you need all three organs. That's the thing. Um, if you don't have all three organs, you will not get into the fourth portal. Uh, the fourth portal is the portal that takes you to Uber Tristram. And what you do is you take the brain, you take the horn, you take Bale's eye, and you put them all inside the cube, and you're going to transmute them just like you did the keys. Be careful not to transmute the items for the portals on top of other portals. If you do this, there is a very good chance that you will not be able to get into all of the portals uh, because they will sit on top of each other and one or two of the portals will be underneath the others and you will not be able to click on them. So make sure that you kind of spread them out from each other and you don't make a very rookie mistake of wasting your portals. Um, when you create this one, you are going to be presented with the Uber Tristram portal. So as you can see, we have Furnace of Pain, Matron's Den, Forgotten Sands, and Uber Tristram. Now, when you get into Forgotten Sands, um, you will find that uh, Uber Durial is usually right here by the door, just being an absolute punk. Um, he will ambush you, so you need to be careful with Uber Durial. Um, he is almost always, not always, but almost always directly by the portal, and he will start attacking you as soon as you walk through. Um, for the Matron's Den, you have a long and nasty slog through basically what is the Countess Tower. And uh, it's going to take you quite a while to find Uber Lilith. Or rather, Lilith, uh, Uber and Ariel. Um, you're going to need some antidote potions and a healthy amount of poison resistance to fight her. And she does hit very hard, so be careful. If I were to rate all three of these monsters, judging by their difficulty in killing them, Uber Duriel is by far the easiest. Uber Iswal is the second hardest, and Lilith is most definitely the most difficult of the three organ holders. Um, so definitely be careful of Uber Lilith, uh, or sorry, Uber Andariel, because quite honestly, she is nasty. She can hit very hard, and her poison will completely negate any kind of regeneration or lifesteal you have, as your HP literally just drains away to nothing. Um, she can also dish out about 1,500 damage in one hit, so if you don't have reliably have a little bit more than 1,500 HP, there's a very good chance she could one-shot you. Um, as far as um, Uber Iswal goes, he is located in one of the, uh, like, Abaddon, like, portals. This is one of, like, the Act 5 portals where basically you go in here and it's, uh, it's full of Act 4 monsters, but it's in Act 5. These little um, portals to Abaddon and stuff like that usually contain a lot of uh, Act 4 monsters mixed with Act 5 monsters. So, like, we've got Demon Tricksters as well as, uh, like, Oblivion Knights and some of the uh, the other lords. And as you're running along, uh, you may actually miss Uber Iswal. For some reason or another, Uber Iswal's uh, graphics look very similar to the Pit Lords that are often in this zone. And uh, a lot of the times you just end up walking by him and he follows you and, like, pimp slaps you. 
Um, Uber Iswal can hit pretty hard. Um, I have had him dish out at least about 1,400 damage in a single hit before, so uh, do be aware that if you're going to be melee tanking him, um, he can potentially one-shot you if you don't have at least like 1,500 or more HP. Um, and then we come to uh, Uber Tristram. So Uber Tristram is the goal of all of this. So once you've obtained your organs from the Furnace of Pain, the Matron's Den, and the Forgotten Sands, you open up your fourth portal, and that is going to take you into Uber Tristram, which looks exactly like regular Tristram, except uh, there is a lot tougher monsters in here. Um, we have three different monsters. Uh, let me go ahead and grab some defensive auras real quick just so that I can survive this, because uh, otherwise I'm going to be dead. Holy shield. There we go. Get a little bit of defense, a little bit of resistances, certainly can't hurt. Grab a couple charms. Just so I don't die horribly and painfully in a ball of fire. <laughs> And uh, that should be good enough. Um, you know what? Let's grab uh, something for survival. Conversion. Now, when you enter Uber Tristram, um, there's some important things that you need to know. Um, there are no monsters in Uber Tristram unless you activate the bosses in the center of the room. So for the duration of while you are basically outside of their radius, there is no monsters here. Um, as long as you don't immediately go running directly into the center of town and aggro the, uh, the three bosses in the center. Um, the other important thing is, is that you cannot use your teleport scrolls inside of um, this particular zone. So the portal, the Tristram portal, is the only way in and the only way out of Uber Tristram. And this can both be um, a very bad thing and also kind of a good thing at the same time. Um, and I just kind of want to show you that when you go into the portal, you are unable to use any teleport scrolls. Um, this is a big issue, of course, because if you attract a huge number of monsters, as you can see, they do not work. If you attract a huge number of monsters to the portal, you can effectively booby trap the portal. And this is a pretty big issue because you won't be able to come back in and actually kill them so that you can obtain your Hellfire Torch. Um, now, to obtain the Hellfire Torch, you have to kill all three of the bosses in the center. Uber Mephisto, who has a particularly nasty Conviction Aura, by the way. Uh, Uber D uh, Bale, right here. And uh, one that people mistake all the time for Uber Diablo. This is not Uber Diablo. This is Pandemonium Diablo. Uh, Uber Diablo is a different monster entirely. Now... Every single one of these monsters will start spawning indefinitely a large number of monsters around them. Uh, Uber Diablo will spawn Pit Lords. Uber Mephisto will spawn Skeletons and Skeleton Mages. And Uber Bale will spawn Ghoul Lords as well as... Um, I'm trying to remember what the other one is that he spawns. I think it's Ghoul Lords. Or is it just Ghoul Lords? I wonder if I could kill the Ubers with conversion. That would be hilarious. Just convert everything. Like, that's my goal. I mean, they spawn infinite monsters, right? So just, like, keep converting every monster they spawn until, like, all of them are dead. <laughs> Wraiths and ghosts. That's right, the ghosts, I remember. Um, so how do you obtain the Hellfire Torch, then? Does it drop from one particular monster? Uh, the answer to the question is no. Um, it drops from the last monster that you kill. So if you are playing in here and you kill Uber Mephisto, Uber Bale, and uh, Pandemonium Diablo is left, and then you kill Pandemonium Diablo, that will be the last monster that you kill. So it's going to drop from Pandemonium Diablo. Um, another item that falls from them is the Hellfire... Um, the Hel you get the Hellfire Torch, and you also get one standard of heroes for every single person that is in there when you kill them. The standard of heroes, as of right now, does nothing. Um, I don't know if it was ever intended to actually do anything, but the standard of heroes at the moment does nothing, and I often like to use them to troll people with. Um, I will, like, go kill Bale, like a normal Bale, not, not Uber Bale, 
and I will literally just um, I will literally just drop the the standard of heroes at the exact time that Bale dies, and people will think that Bale dropped the standard of heroes, and everybody gets all excited, and they have no clue what it does. The standard of heroes is just a really weird item that is it's like a little tiny small charm. It has a level requirement, and as far as we know, it does nothing. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pause this real quick, and uh, I'm going to see if I can't kill the Ubers with my conversion. It would be hilarious. Let's uh, let's play around with it, shall we? So that didn't work, um, <laughs> as you can see by my dead body. Um, and this also brings an important point, as I talked about earlier, is that if you die in there and you block the portal, um, you're going to end up in a situation like this where you can't get your body back. Um, as you can see, as soon as you load in, instantly dead. Uh, because the portal is now surrounded by all sorts of monsters who are, of course, going to murderize you um, as you come in. You need to be very careful not to block up and basically keep this portal from, uh, from activating. Now, um, there are plenty of characters in the game that have a pretty easy time with the Ubers. And there are a couple things about the Ubers that you need to know if you're going to fight them. So number one, what you need to know about the Ubers is they regenerate insanely, ridiculously fast. Um, and Prevent Monster Heal, which is the main way that we deal with regeneration, does not work on them. Um, the only ability that you can use that will prevent their healing entirely is Open Wounds. Uh, open Wounds will prevent the monster's regeneration for 8 seconds. So you have to make sure that you are applying Open Wounds in some way to the bosses as you are killing. Otherwise they will regenerate so fast that all the damage that you did will be for nothing. Um, the other important thing that you need to know about the Ubers is Mephisto himself. So Mephisto is probably the worst of the three because he has the Conviction Aura. And the Conviction Aura will essentially rip all your resistances and your defense away, making you uh, extremely weak. Um, you usually will need something to counter those resistance losses, like a Salvation Aura, Fade from Treachery, or any other number of overprotection effects. Um, if you've never seen Conviction, Conviction is the Paladin Aura. Um, let me move myself out of the way real quick. Bink! Uh, conviction is the Paladin Aura that reduces all resistances and all defense by a flat percentage. Um, and uh, Mephisto's, I believe, is level 20, if I want to make sure. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's level 20. And if we were to beef ours up to level 20, you would see what it's capable of. Um, so what you're looking at for Mephisto is a total of negative 125% to your resistances, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and that's, of course, in combination with the hell negatives as well. So you also have to deal with the hell negative resistances and the negative resistances from him. And it also reduces your defense by 91%. So uh, it's going to strip you down pretty good as far as resistances go. Now, there are a couple ways that you can deal with this. Uh, namely, the first way is to put conviction on yourself. Uh, if you are a paladin, you can actually cancel out his conviction with yours. Uh, this is actually a pretty well-known method. Another way is just simply to have so much resistances that his negatives don't really do anything to you. And a common way to do that is to use the treachery armor and proc fade on yourself. Um, this also works. You can also just have a massive amount of resistances coming from your equipment and gear. Uh, the other important thing to know about Mephisto is that um, he has... 0% drain effectiveness. Um, I have a video that goes over lifesteal and life leech in general, and uh, one thing that you have to know about life leech is that if a monster has 0% drain effectiveness, you cannot drain life from them at all. Um, skeletons, for instance, have 0% drain effectiveness, which means that if you are trying to steal life from a skeleton, you are going to fail. If you are a melee or a ranged character who is expecting your lifesteal to work on Mephisto, please note that it will not. Mephisto's drain effectiveness is at zero, which means you can get nothing from him. Um, the way that players circumvent this is they use the curse that necromancers have called Life Tap. Uh, life Tap does not steal life from the monster. Instead, it gives you life back depending on how much physical damage you deal. Uh, so as long as you are using a physical damage melee or ranged ability, um, Life Tap will basically return a large percentage of life back to you. Um, and that's why most of the time you will hear, as people are talking about Ubers, they will say, oh, well, we need Dracul's gloves, or we need an exile shield, or we need a last wish, or, or we need a life tap wand, 
or something that is going to give us life tap so that we can survive Mephisto's craziness. Now, in, in combination with Mephisto's Conviction Aura, obviously Mephisto has some pretty nasty elemental damage abilities like his Lightning Ball and his Charged Bolts, which do a pretty insane amount of damage. And if you are in the negatives because of his Conviction on you, he will take you out with those Lightning Attacks like that. Um, it's also important to note that Bale can clone himself, and while Bale is not really the most ridiculously difficult monster, he is stupid hard for some reason just to get to sit still and actually kill him. And if there's two of them and they're constantly spamming their abilities on you, it can get a little harrowing uh, because that one cold ability has that knocks you back all over the place can just make things a nightmare. Um, the monsters themselves that they spawn, all of the little, the little individual monsters, they will continue to spawn forever. Um, and while you really can't let them build up on you on a point to a point that literally you die, you can't let them go completely. So you kind of need to either A, kill the bosses as quick as possible, or B, have someone dishing out a little bit of crowd control. Uh, now speaking of group play inside of Tristram, it is important to note that for some reason or another, Bale will specifically target sorceresses and ranged classes. Um, it seems like he has a preference to attack sorceresses first over everyone else. So if you are a sorceress who goes inside of the Trist Uber Tristram with somebody else, please be aware that Bale will chase you down forever. Um, Amazons also seem to suffer the same fate, but only when there is not a sorceress in the, the zone, and Bale will chase the Amazon down without, without you know, just, just with, with relentless pursuit. Um, this could be a detriment if you're not strong enough to be able to take his attacks. Um, he could kill you relatively easily. Um, there are, of course, uh, very easy ways that you can do Uber Tristram, uh, usually using skills that will guarantee hits. Um, and the reason why people use these skills, like, for instance, Smite, which guarantees a hit, is that Uber Bale, Uber... Mephisto and Pandemonium Diablo are level 110 monsters. Um, and the two-hit calculation on attack rating uh, takes into account level difference between you and the monster that you're fighting. So, for instance, if you are level 80 and you go in to fight level 110 monsters, there is a very, very good chance that you are going to miss most of your attacks, even if your attack rating is amazing, because the level difference between you and the monster is huge. And we're talking about, what, 80 to 90, 90 to 100, 100 to 110. A Uber Mephisto is 30 levels higher than you are, and so you have a pretty huge miss penalty just simply because of that difference in level. Um, and I think that pretty much covers everything. Once you kill all three, Uber Mephisto, Uber Bale, and Pandemonium Diablo, you will get a random torch. Um, what that torch is going to be is completely random. Uh, there's no, there is no uh, guarantee that you're going to get what you need. Um, our kinship likes to do them in groups. We like to all farm the keys together. We get a whole bunch of keys, and we do all the the um, ubers like in a in, like in a day. We just make a day of it, and we'll do like 20 or 30 ubers, and then we hand out the torches uh, or roll for them, uh, depending on you know which ones they are. And um, it's very rare that you will get like a large number of sorceress and uh, paladin torches. In fact, it's been my experience that for some reason or another, the druid, the assassin, and the barbarian torches are like more common than anything. <laughs> and, and everybody absolutely hates it when they spend all that time farming the keys, farming the organs, and then they end up with a druid torch and all they really wanted was like an Amazon or a necromancer torch or something. And um, it is a pain in the butt. Now, the plus three skills is absolutely amazing for certain characters, and for other characters, maybe not so much. Um, some characters get really good benefit from plus the skills, like, for instance, the Necromancer. And other skills get, other characters get not as good plus the skills, like from, like, the Barbarian, depending on what kind of Barbarian you are. It might not have as great of an effect as it does on, say, like, a Summon Necromancer. Um, the Sorceress obviously gets absolutely amazing bonuses from her plus three, because she's got Masteries and and like all these different skills like static field and uh and energy shield and and teleports and in the and the chilling armors and all these things that could definitely use plus the skills because sorceresses tend to kind of pepper their points all along um 
There's really not a lot more to go over with the Hellfire Torches. Um, obtaining one can be very difficult early on in the game, and there are definitely some budget builds that you can utilize to kill the Ubers. Uh, there are definitely characters that have done it, like literally at like level 35, I think, was like one of the lowest level characters I've seen do the Ubers. Um, and it really comes down to a liberal application of open wounds, crushing blow, and, uh, and using an ability that has a guaranteed hit. Uh, there are three guaranteed hit abilities in the game. Smite, Guided Arrow, and Impale. Those are the three guaranteed hit abilities, and they will make it extremely easy to apply those open wounds, crushing blow, and deadly strike to the target. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when it's a 35-minute video on the Hellfire Torch. And uh, as always, keep watching.